Hello there, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. Uh, today in this video, I'm going to do a, a video on how to calculate work done on an object. Now, we're going to do this kind of in a very simplified manner. Um, it can get a little bit more complex like a lot of things, um, but we're going to keep it nice and simple here. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to continue to talk about work, but we're going to talk about not just what it is, which we've already talked about, but now how to calculate it. Um, so as we know, work is the amount of energy that goes into or out of a system. Remember, energy cannot be created or destroyed, but you can add energy to a system or you can remove energy from a system. By a system, again, always means just the object of our attention, the thing we're focusing on. So if we're talking about energy, we're talking about something really simple. So for example, my real simple example right here, I'm going to use the system as the blue block blue block is our system, is the thing that we're talking about, and say, I'm trying to push this block here. All right, let's say it's not moving, and I'm trying to get it move. All right, I have to put a certain amount of force into it. All right, how much kinetic energy I give it, which basically is the energy of its motion, the amount of mechanical energy I give this block depends on two things. All right, it depends on two things on that. And it's going to depend on one, how hard I push. Now, in this case here, I want to give kinetic, my kinetic energy to this block, right? Because I want this block to go from not moving to moving. So I have to give it my energy, all right? How much it moves is going to be dependent on how much of energy I give it. So how hard I push, so how much force I apply, all right? And it depends on excuse me, how far I push it. So if I apply a lot of force for one meter, whew, I did a little bit of work. But if I apply a lot of force for 100 meters, I did a lot more work. I would actually feel that a lot more. I would feel more tired because I put more of my energy into the block, more work, which is that idea of putting my energy out of my system and into the system of the blue block. All right, so we've applied this here. So really, essentially, when it comes down, when it comes down to it, there are two things that determine how much energy is going to go into the system, or what we call work. All right, work is going to be dependent on all right, how much force you apply and it's your distance that you travel. Or we can just say capital W for work is equal to force times distance. All right, our force times distance. It's a very simple formula. So, but let's just look at it in terms of what we've been doing and some practice here. So the idea is we're just putting a little bit of numbers to some of this here, um, which we can add on top of the numbers we already did, hopefully when we talked about or calculating gravitational potential energy and kinetic energy. So let's do two examples right here. Let's say um, in my first example, let's just go with something, again, really simple. Let's do the box example. All right. So let's say I am staying right here next to this, this box. I'm going to help someone in my family, let's say, move. So I have this big box here. And uh, I have to move it because I got to go move it to the van or whatever it is or the truck. All right. So what I'm going to do, though, but I'm feeling really cocky. So I'm going to flex. And I'm going to try and pick up this box. I'm going to lift it over my head um, because I want to show how strong I am um, and impress people. All right. So I've lifted that box above my head. I started it on the ground and then I lifted it on my head. So let's just go back kind of with what we've done before just to kind of set up for what we're doing next. So if I was gonna draw my LOL chart, right, my gravitational potential energy and my kinetic energy. So remember, based on height, based on motion. So at the very beginning, the box is not moving. 
So it has no kinetic energy. It is on the ground, so its gravitational potential energy is zero, zero, zero. All right, we're all set there. There's other types of energy, but we're just focusing on these two right now. All right, when I lift it into the air, kind of the after part, it's right now I'm holding it up. It's not moving, so I still have zero kinetic energy, but right now it is off the ground. All right, let's say in this case here, I lifted it up. Um, two meters. I lifted it up two meters in the air. All right. That means two meters in the air, it has gravitational potential energy. I could calculate it. Mass of the box times 9.8 times two equals its potential energy. But for right now, let's just say I have two blocks of energy I added. All right. We know, based on what we talked about, that this means I have done work onto the box. That, that box has gained two blocks of energy from me. I have given some of my energy to the box, two of them, and now it's in the form of gravitational potential energy. So this is my work. All right? But what I want to do right now is find out how much work did I do. So there, that's my work. Another question is, how much work did I do? I'm going to use this formula right here. All right. So if I want to calculate that right here, how much work did I do? Let's say to lift the box, I had to do, I had to apply a force of 750 newtons. So to find out the amount of work, which is going to be force, times distance, I did 750 newtons, and I lifted it 2 meters, 750 times 2 is 1,500, those are my two units, newtons times meters, or newton meter, but another name for a newton meter is a joule, which makes sense because I'm adding energy into it. I did, so what I just did into that box, I added 1,500 joules of energy to raise it up, all right, two meters. All right, so that's our first example there, right? Just the idea, same things we've done before, but now we're thinking about how much force I had to do to lift it over that amount of time or that amount of distance provides how much work I actually did on it. Right. So with that said, or so let's do one more example. All right. Uh, let's say in this case here, uh, one we kind of did in our practice earlier. Let's say in this case here, I'm going to stop a moving car. Let's say this car is. Let's say this car is moving in this direction. Right, and let's say it's going positive 50 meters per second. All right, I'm going to try and look really impressive. I'm going to try and stop it. All right, so let's see, I bring I, after a certain amount of time. Eventually, the car slows down, accelerates, and I bring it down to zero. And it takes me a total of 20 meters to do that. That's actually pretty impressive. That would be superhero. All right. So if I was going to draw, let's kind of go again. Things that we've already done. Let's put this in an LOL chart. Here's my gravitational. Here's my kinetic. All right. At the very beginning, the car is right on the ground, so no potential, but it is moving very fast. 
I'm going to draw five blocks to show that it's going super fast. At the very end, no gravitational potential because it's on the ground, and there is no kinetic because I made it stop. So in this case here, I know that the car has lost five blocks of energy. So that means work has been done. And you know what, let's make this problem a little bit different. Let's say I actually know how much work this is. Let's say I already knew and I knew that I just did Fifty thousand joules of work. I gave. I did fifty thousand joules of work onto the car over that twenty that twenty meters. But the question is, how much force did I put on that car? So in this case here, unlike the first one, we were solving for work. This time, I want to know how much force did I apply to slow down the car. All right. So all I would do is I have to use my equation here. Work is force times distance, right? But this time I know my work, 50,000 joules. I do not know my amount of force, that's what I'm trying to figure out, times the 20 meters. All right? If I wanted to do my algebra, all right? Well, that's 20, 20 F, I divide both sides by 20. That cancels this. 50,000 divided by 20. That means that the amount of force that I applied was 2,500 newtons of force because I already knew how much work I did on it. All right. So, quick recap. All right. How much work we know is how much energy you put in or out of a system. We've done that with the energy bar charts. All we now know are talking about is how much work I put into it or out of it. It's going to depend on how much force you apply to it and for how far it goes. All right. So we did two examples here, one where we calculated the work, where one, or one where we use the work to calculate how force. Now, one thing I want to make, last point I want to make about this is to have work done on an object, not only do you have to apply a force, which makes sense, I also have to do it over a distance, which means if I'm pushing on this wall and this wall doesn't move, then technically I'm not doing work on it because right now the work would be how much, no matter how hard I push, 10,000 newtons. But if it goes zero meters, then I'm not technically putting any work on it because I am not making the wall move, all right? I am not giving the wall kinetic energy. I might try to, but it's not changing its energy. I'm applying a force, but force doesn't always mean that you're giving it energy. And that's what the whole idea is, all right? So I know this looks like a lot, but we're really just applying something or some numbers to what we already know, all right? So. If you didn't understand, you need to go back. That's the great thing about videos. Go back, look it over, listen to hear me say it again. If there's something you missed because maybe you were taking notes and you're writing it down, please just make sure that you pause it or go back, rewrite down, re-listen. Um, otherwise, thank you very much for listening. Good luck and may the science be with you.